Good morning, folks. You're watching the highest energy production on the sun and the active regions responsible departing on the north. We've got eye candy, top science news, as well as last night's special video, but we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on the sun was quiet. No flares, no CMEs erupted at Earth, just a bit of morphing of the surface area. We did witness one filament erupt. It is the big one we've been watching crest the limb towards the far side. The solar wind up next. The most minor of enhancements occurred overnight. You see top left the purple line for solar wind speed with a bit of action. It is a minor variation associated with the phi angle jolt in blue above it, resulting in only a minor reinvigoration of geomagnetic conditions, bottom right. Up first in the articles, we're at the new SVS animation tracking animal movement for ecological study. From large scale down to the ability to track the motion of a single animal, their data should eventually supplant small scale studies that survey tiny areas and then have to extrapolate to guess larger scale size of flocks and herds. It should be obvious why this data can outshine the former. Up next, Comet Borislav. It may never get the press that Oumuamua got, but this interstellar comet is the most pristine one they've ever seen. It has spent little of its life around other stars and planets, and they say it not only formed in similar conditions to those of the early solar system, but it managed to get to now without anything remotely resembling an encounter or a battle scar. From eye candy to the crapper next, I'm not sure any science organization has been as frustrating as nature the last few weeks, uber woke shill house to put it lightly. They've taken Bill Gates' side and that of Captain Chemtrail David Keith at Harvard, even wrote a book about how to take this science into the future. I have to sadly admit, it's doing much better than my book on this topic. Then again, mine's only one page and all it says is cut it out, you turkeys. But still, any of you observers here want to spray the sky? No? Okay. About half of you will already be acquainted with the story after last night's special video, which was dedicated to this paper. But if you missed it, they've determined that the strength of the field is unrelated to cycle timing of reversal. When it's time for the reversal, it's time, whether you're high or low. This debunked the previous denial of risk, which had said our modern field strength was higher than average, so we could ignore the cycle timing being due now and Earth's beginning the exact shift expected. We had made this graphic, making fun of that intellectually insulting notion, and the paper here, six years later, has debunked their premise anyway. Not straying too far off from there, we come to a study of the last 100,000 years and identify interstadials and magnetic events. While most do show up in the data, it's another nod to the varying intensity of those cycles and how they don't equally affect all parts of the globe every cycle either. Speaking of cycles, the 12,000 year cycle we track with priority is overlain on the 100,000 year Earth Ice Age cycle. A major question was how long do we have before not only the 12,000 year cycle resets, but the 100,000 year cycle reset that throws us into an extended ice age. In this chart, now is on the left back in time goes over to the right. The jumps up are the interglacial warm periods, like we're in now, and otherwise, we're in ice ages. And it has been presumed, from all the data thus far, that yes, we are perfectly due for not only a magnetic shift at Earth, but this plunge back down into lasting cold. We greatly appreciate your support. Catch last night's video to watch the last risk denial melt away. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.